Hey guys, it's Sadiq Batua, and a question that I get is how do I translate my storyboards into animation or how do I start animating from my storyboards? Now, my primary job in the animation industry, I mostly work as a story artist. I've been doing it for years. I've worked in both feature and television, but I like to animate on the side and I've done some animation freelance on the side. And so this is a discussion that I've always wanted to have because it's something that I've personally been exploring for my own personal projects and my experience within the industry. So I'm just gonna talk about the process that makes sense for me from getting your storyboards into animation, first of all, you gotta have storyboards. Now, in an animation production, we make a video version of our storyboards known as animatics. So these are reels that are just our storyboards timed out with music, sound, voice acting, etc. The animatic serves as a foundation for our animated project. Although if you're freeform, you don't need to make an animatic, you can just work off of your story panels, but I just wanna talk about in a perspective that you have an animatic. So back then I would storyboard with Adobe Animate or Photoshop, export the panels as independent JPEGs and edit it together in Adobe Premiere or some video editing program. I would add sounds, music, timing, and voice acting, and I would just render it as a movie. Nowadays, I use Storyboard Pro. I've been using Storyboard Pro for quite a few years now, mainly for work, but I've been using it heavily for my personal projects. And one of the reasons why I mainly use Storyboard Pro now is that I can edit my storyboards into a movie file from there with sound and music. I can also render each shot into its own movie file if I've organized my shots properly. And it's all automatic too. I can even export files that show each layer as its own independent bitmap file. I can even export master versions of my storyboard shots. So if I did camera moves in Storyboard Pro, it outputs a master shot version of it without the camera moves. It shows everything that I've drawn outside of the canvas and it notates the camera placement as you can see with the red and green rectangles that travel around each image. I can just import this in my animation file and work with it, but I can just take this and use it for my background painting reference. Now, before I had the system and if I knew the shot had a lot of camera moves and it needed a bigger space, I would do a pass where I would sketch out the master shot myself and sort of plan where the camera moves might be. And this would serve as my canvas for animation. But I've actually consolidated this stage into Storyboard Pro, where I did the master shot and the camera moves already. So the easy solution that you can do is import your storyboards into whatever animation software or app that you're using and animate on top of it in a different layer basically just animating on top of your storyboards. Now, this isn't wrong. I've been doing it like this for years, but the issues that I found was that I didn't really problem solve a lot of the things that are needed to kickstart animation from the storyboards. There's like a missing step in between because oftentimes my storyboards are quite loose. Sometimes the perspective might be a bit off. The background of the characters might be a bit unclarified. The characters are off model. The idea isn't as finesse because they're just storyboards. And if I'm starting animation directly from my storyboards, I have more problems to figure out. And juggling that problem solving along with animation can be overwhelming. So the step between storyboards and animation is a stage known as layout. In CG animation, it's known as pre-visualization where the emphasis is on the camera movement and the object placement or the character placement or the prop placement. But it falls under the same purpose. It's to inform a rough idea, whether it's a camera move, whether it's hitting certain beats of a certain shot. Before the final polish where you finish the backgrounds, the character animation, and other visual effects. However, I'm mostly just going to focus on the 2D animation aspect of it. So what does a traditional layout include or what makes a good layout? It has perspective and background information as well as character staging. It also has layer information. So how many layers there are, what layers are active. So an example is like a layer for this character, a layer for another character, and a layer for effects animation, or a layer for foreground elements. If you can, it's good to include camera move notes. So where the frame of the camera is placed throughout the set. And sometimes layout might have a few main key poses of the overall idea for the character acting and so on. And of course, timing information. And for me, this is supported by the imported storyboard video files that I import per shot. Or you're working off of an exposure sheet. Now, as someone who wants to have less steps in my work, I usually try to figure out a good chunk of my layout information and my storyboards, such as perspective, staging, and camera moves. I usually resort to grid lines for backgrounds because it'll be helpful for background painting. It'll help me figure out where the depth is or the overall perspective of things where the horizon line is. So I want to show you guys an example of how I prepare my files. So after I do my storyboards, I just put the storyboard video file and the storyboard panels within the animated shot just as a reference. 
Luckily, most animation programs import the sound from the video file too. So if your storyboard has sound and music, you can import that too within the animation file. And I would just do this for all of my shots before I even start layout. And once I prepare all those files, I then start my layout. And my layout, I usually just do one or two drawings depending on the shot. A given example is if the character moves around, like if a character exits the screen or if one character like moves from one place all the way to the other part of the set. Sometimes I'll just have a layout where there are multiple poses of the character within one drawing. And this will serve as a purpose for things like tracking the proportion of the character placement or the overall path this character takes, like if a character is running around the scene. And then once I figured out all my layout, then I can start animating. So here I imported my storyboards without the camera movement. It has the basic idea, but when I did my single layout drawing, and I'm just gonna show you guys that, is that I changed the overall performance, the overall pose, and you know, proportions, sometimes maybe just changing perspective just a bit. These are the things that you're going to encounter doing layout. You're going to probably make drawings that don't really resemble the storyboard, but just pushes the idea of the storyboard or makes a better template for animation versus the storyboard. So here's a brief example that's not really related to storyboarding, but more on the layout aspect. So here's a 3D image that I found on Sketchfab and I wanted to animate a character doing parkour on it, but there were things I needed to figure out. So as you can see, I did one drawing trying to figure out where the horizon line is and trying to figure out, um, you know, perspective things and how to match the character proportion to the perspective to the horizon line and after i figured this out i already have something to kind of pose things out so i did one layer where i just figured out the potential placement of the character running through the set and i would just have this with a low opacity and just animate the character um straight ahead i did the straight ahead i think and just just animated the character on top of this reference that i made myself so this is another use case example of a layout. So this Tomb Raider jump that I did, it's the same thing. So if I were to show you guys how I plant this, let me let me walk through it. So I'm just gonna inactivate some layers so I, I can show you guys some stuff. So again, first of all, I try to figure out my, my perspective lines or my grid lines. And then I would try to figure out the technical aspect of where the character is, is at. And I just tracked her waist to, to match perspective with the horizon line. And using this as my guide, then I kind of briefed out uh, what the poses might look like based on where they're staged in the set. And then from here, I would just have this underneath my animation as I rough animate it. So again, doing stuff like this is important for planning. And this is basically layout. So if you're learning animation and doing things like the bouncing ball, a good animation teacher will make you plan things out before you start animating it. Like plan out the spacing, the squash and stretch, the, the staging overall. So this bouncing ball that I have, like one of the things I always tell my students to do when learning the bouncing ball is to actually prepare a layout or to sort of animate it without animating it, if that makes sense. So, you know, this is what it kind of looks like. This is technically and practically, you know, technically a layout. Basically, I'm just using this as my reference of, you know, proportion, uh, where the squash and stretch happens, and basically I'm planning out the overall arc. And again, this is basically an introduction to what the layout stage is. Another good reason why I recommend doing a layout stage when translating your storyboards into animation, like just having a few drawings or a single drawing per shot, is because it gives you a good gauge to figure out which shots are more ambitious than other shots, which shots are important, which shots aren't important, and how to prioritize one shot over the other depending on the circumstance such as the budget, the time, the energy, etc. You know, things like which shots are more expensive or which shots are cheaper, which shots are complex with a lot of characters and a lot of effects versus shots that are very simple, minimal movement, maybe only has one character on screen. The layout stage allows you to foresee that. Now, something that I gotta bring up is that layout in anime work is 
more of the same thing, but then treat it as a first pass or rough pass of animation. So when someone does LO work for anime, they did layout, but they also did a first pass of animation. But a lot of the drawing problem solving is there, such as perspective, having a few drawings of your characters on model, a general sense of timing, and the basic idea of the shot. So if I were given multiple cuts for anime work and I had to do LO for a few cuts, I would just try to flesh out each shot with a few drawings before I even start thinking about doing a rough pass animation, just so I'm not switching gears too often. So yeah, when I do layouts, I'm pretty much just trying to figure out the, the foundation of the shot of the storyboard before I even start animating it. And from there, you can problem solve, you can figure out what to prioritize, what to hold back on. It's just that extra step of problem solve. If you just want to animate on top of your rough storyboards, that's fine too. But in most cases, my storyboards don't automatically reflect what you'll see on screen. And I just need that extra step to figure that out. Anyways, that's all. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.